One of the first steps to making a user interface that I recommend taking is settling on some framework that you want to use. When you use something like a CSS framework, you can use pre-built components that you can just configure to your liking and preferences. And that is a very time-saving approach to making UIs, because if we don't use pre-styled components that we can change manually afterwards, we would have to sit there and make CSS until we make a button look great. And then you would go on to styling the input field and so on. Uh, so I recommend using some pre-built stuff and then we're going to use CSS layouting to actually make all of our pre-built stuff behave the way that we want them to. So the first step we're going to do is we're going to settle on a library. So you can use whatever you want here. I'm not going to use a lot of... So I'm going to use very generic components that exist in almost any CSS library that you find. So things like buttons and input fields and nothing too uh, particular. Which means that you don't need to use exactly the CSS framework that I'm using, uh, but you are of course free to do so. So if we go into our front-end application here, we're going to install a package. And uh, this is a package that also is part of a bigger framework. Uh, so you can use a global installation if you want to use their tools like uh, their command line interface. The installation is npm ig and then at ionic slash cli. So by now you have probably guessed that the name of the library is ionic and it's a library that is used to making mobile applications but where you program them from a web framework. So if you use React or Vue or Angular, you can use this framework. And uh, now I'm going to write an npm install that is not global, so just for this particular library, and it's going to be called Ionic at Angular. And since we already have an Angular application that we're just adding Ionic on top of, we just have to write ng at, at Ionic slash angular let's uh, navigate into our app module and we'll see that after you add ionic you will get this import ionic module for root uh, we can put in a little curly bracket here and then we can add some configurations to this so i prefer the ios uh, look more than the android look uh, i think they call it material design look so i'm just going to show you what the application looks like right now so you might be able to see that even by now, we've already modified the look slightly. So CSS frameworks, they don't just give you pre-built components. They also modify the default uh, look of HTML elements. So there is a slight difference already. And I'm going to show you some of the pre-built components here. So I'm going to change some of the tags here. So the uh, button here, I want to use the Ionic button. So I'm going to go into the application now and let's just see the difference. It's going to auto reload. And now we have a button that is styled like this by default. So now I'm just going to make the login page. All of these elements together make up our login page. And these are the things we're interested in changing right now. So I would like to have the login page censored on the screen. So an easy way to do this is to use a grid layout and then just modify what rows and columns are where. So grid layouting doesn't involve us using different elements. We just take the existing divider here. So that's what div stands for. It's just a container. And then we write style. So that's how we modify the CSS. And I'm going to write display grid. So of course you could pick other display strategies. There's a lot of people who like the flex box. I think the flex box is a little more complicated to work with than a grid. So a grid is organized in rows and columns just like a table, but it is different from working with a table. And uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna dedicate some rows to this grid. So when you pick the number of rows that you want inside of your grid, the way that you would do that is write grid template columns. And now we just want some repeating pattern here. So we write repeat and then the number of columns and then the size of the columns. So the reason why I write 12 here is because 12 is a very divisible number. 
If you use a number that is uh, not divisible, like um, let's say a prime number, a prime number would be a very bad number to pick for this, because if you want something to take up one quarter of your space or one third or half of your space, it's impossible if the total amount of columns is not divisible. But since 12 divides into two and three and four and six and still not make a fractional number, it's a very good number for layouts. And one FR just means one fractional. So of course you could say that uh, each one of these should be some given size, uh, but I want all of them to be even. And I'm also gonna specify some space for rows. So I'm gonna use the one called grid auto rows and uh, also pick a fractional unit here. You could say that you want each row to have some size, like 50 pixels or whatever, uh, but I'm gonna go with the fractional unit here. I would like the contents inside of the grid to be centered. So the way that I would do that is I would make a div here inside of the outer div, and then I just drag the stuff here inside it. Sorry, I'm just making all of these uh, adjustments here. Now I think I have an outer div and I have an inner div here. So the inner div we're also going to add a style tag to. And what we're going to write here is grid column colon. And then we're going to add two numbers with a slash in the middle. And that means the starting and the ending point. So if I want this divider to take up some space here on the x-axis from here to here, I just specify it with the numbers. So let's say I want it to start at number three and end it at number 10. I would just write it like this. So this is the starting point and this is the ending point. And I can do the same with the rows. So it's going to take up some number of rows. So let's write grid row and then give it some numbers here. So I'm going to write 4, 12. And actually, I should change this to 4, 10. And uh, since I also have some text in here and I want the text to be centered, I can write text align center. And now let's go in and see our application here. And now we can see we have uh, centered our app here. So let's say that we want to move this further down. We could just write something like 8 to uh, 16. Refresh. And now we have it further down. And I think if we open up the inspect here, we can actually see the full grid. So we have it right here, right? And you can see all of the different cells inside of the grid. And I'm also going to change the input fields. So there is something called ion input. So it's really just a matter of writing ion in front of the already existing input. And it uses all of the same uh, attributes. So we don't need to change any attributes. We can actually wrap the input fields in something called ion item. So item is a small container that we would often use for something like input fields and options and so on. Ion item, I'm gonna make one more here. And I'm actually going to make an ending tag here. Typically input fields, they don't have ending tags, but Ion input has an ending tag. And uh, I don't really need to use this breakpoint because Ion item makes a breakpoint anyways. And then we have these two final buttons here, and I'm just going to change the color of one of them. In order to change the color, we don't need to write any CSS. And if you can get away with not writing CSS, you should definitely do that. There are different colors built in by default. So there is something called warning that has a yellow color. So if I want a yellow color for the sign up button, I just do this. And now we have a login page that is centered on the screen. So we can very easily make it behave the way we want with just a grid layout and a couple new CSS elements. So now we're done with the like in screen and we're ready to move on to the feed. So let's just check what the feed looks like right now. Let's just uh, register a random user here. So right now it looks like this. So what I would like to see in this view here is to have some kind of toolbar at the top with the sign out bottom in the corner and then have the input field for the message in the bottom and the send message button next to that one, and then have the message feed in the middle of the screen with chat bubbles. So let's see if we can make this with a grid layout. So right now we're only seeing it if we're 
authenticated add uh, and that's all right that's what we want and we're going to add some style here so just like before the style tag just modifies the css of this element we don't really need to make it a css file or anything like that i generally don't use a lot of css i just use only the things that are necessary so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to pick some kind of height for the feet so this divider here should only be the feet and then I'm going to make the message uh, send a input field here in the bottom. So I'm just going to move these immediately. And uh, then we can only focus on the feed here. So the feed should take up almost the entirety of the page. So we can set the height equals to some value. So if we use 100%, that means 100% of the parent element. So for this instance, it would take up the entirety of the page. But I want there to be a little bit of space left in the bottom for the input field. So what I'm going to do, do is uh, I'm going to write a calc 100% minus 150 pixels. So I'm going to make a, a fixed size for the uh, input field in the bottom so it's always going to be 150 pixels and just like before we're going to write display grid so we're going to use a grid display once again and since we want all of the messages to appear from the bottom we can write align content end so remember when we used the align text up here align text sensor we can use align content to just take all of the elements and just put them in the bottom and because we want some number of columns we again have to specify the grid template columns and then use the repeat 12 one fraction and for the rows we're going to use grid auto rows again but this time i'm going to use a fixed size for each message uh, so you could use fractional sizes again uh, but we don't want fractional space when we know that one message is always going to take up some height in the space of the feed. So I'm going to put 50 pixels for each message. And since we have a divider here that isn't by default scrollable, we can make this divider scrollable by writing overflow y, which is the y direction. So it's the vertical one. And I'm going to use scroll here. So when there is too much content in the y direction, the, div the divider becomes scrollable. So this is what it looks like right now if we add a message. Uh, so of course, this is uh, really far from done, uh, but we're starting to get somewhere. So I'm just going to delete this one. And since all of this is inside of the H tag, we now have it in the middle of the feed. And I want the sign out button to be in the middle of some toolbar. And there is a toolbar a component already inside of this library. So it's called Ion Header. Uh, and inside of the header, we can put a toolbar here. I think I just need to write bar. And uh, we can write something like a uh, welcome to the real time chat. And uh, now we can make some icons up here. So I'm going to make a, a little container for the icons that is just called buttons. So buttons is just a small tray. And here I'm going to make a button that is the sign out button. Ion button. And it's going to have a little icon. Ion icon. So there is a page that just has all of the icons for Ionic listed. And you can just search for an icon. So this is a sign out we're doing. And there is uh, one sign out icon right here. We can just click this one to copy it. And uh, then go back to our IDE. Just paste it here. And then just make this one clickable. Uh, by service sign out. You know what? I'm going to make my own sign out method that has uh, some feedback. So I'm going to make one that's just called sign out. And uh, I will implement this one later. And if we want uh, the buttons to stay on the right 
uh, hand side, we can add this one attribute called slot. And this is what it looks like right now. We can center this one by just using the element called ion title. And uh, I promise this is one of the last times that we're going to use Ionic specific uh, UI elements. Uh, but this is what uh, the top bar looks like right now. And uh, let's, let's go back to the feed now. And we delete the sign out here. And uh, we can take uh, the image here and just uh, put the image into the toolbar actually. Uh, I'm going to do it right next to the sign out button here. And now we just need the input field here. And put the input field right next to the image. And right now the max height is six, set to 60. I'm going to set it to 30. So it looks like a small avatar on the page. And uh, this is what uh, the application looks like right now. So let's uh, go back and take a look at the feed. So right now we have an ng4 loop that just loops over the messages and then just prints it as a JSON. So I'm going to make a little divider in here. And just like previously, we're going to add a style tag and then just specify how much space in the x axis this one is going to take. So I'm going to write grid column and we're going to start at 1 and end at 12 so each message line is going to fill up the entire line so the message bubble isn't necessarily going to take the entire line but just the container for the bubble and inside of uh, this one we're going to write the ng4 loop actually i'm just going to uh, copy this one here and delete the p tag so the way that chat bubbles typically work in very many systems is that if you are the sender of the message they will have a certain color and they will float to one direction or the other so i'm going to make a divider here that just has a style tag and it says float right and inside of this tag, we're going to put the message. So there's something called ion text. It's really just the same as if you use a paragraph or whatever. Uh, and this text message here is going to have some style as well. So we make it look a particular way if they belong to us. So we have a particular color, for example. So the color for the message, if it's our own message, is going to be a slightly blue bubble. So we can write background color. Uh, and I'm going to go with one called Corn but our Blue. And the color of the text is now going to be white. And we can just write color white. We're going to add a little bit of padding. So the inside of the bubble until it reaches the text, there's going to be a little bit of space. And I'm just going to use absolute uh, measures here with pixels. It doesn't really matter. The bubbles, they shouldn't change too much in size. So 5px, 12px, and uh, remember to not add a little semicolon here. Otherwise, it thinks that it's a new property. And uh, I'm also going to add some border radius. That's what actually makes the bubble round. And I'm going to go with 15 pixels here. And let's just put in the content of the message here. So m.data that message content and uh, let's uh, pull up the application to see what it looks like and uh, this is what uh, the chat bubble looks like right now and the reason why it didn't take up the entire space of the row is because it, there was a typo in the column name here so now it is actually taking from 1 to 12 so if I refresh the page now and open up, we can now see that it is floating to the right here. And of course, we only want it to float to the right under the circumstance that the message belongs to us. So we can do that with an ng if directive uh, because the ID of the message is attached to the message document and we know the ID of the locked in user. So we can just write ng if my service auth current user uid 
equals m dot data dot user. And now if we refresh the page and open up, so we have the chat bubbles right here, right? And uh, this uh, last divider here is also going to have an ng if my service auth current user is not null. And uh, we're going to add a little bit of style to this div here, style. And again, we're going to make it uh, fill out the entire row here by saying that it should take 1 to 12 columns here. We can just start out by making the input field into an ion input. Place the closing tag here and then wrap it in an ion item. And uh, put this one into the ion item and just make the button into an ionic button. And uh, we can further modify the look of the button. So let's say that we want to have some particular UI. We can always just uh, control space here and see what we can do with this one. So one attribute we can use to modify the look of the button is called fill. So there are different forms of fills. Uh, one of them is an outline. There is also one called block. Uh, I think I'm going to go with outline. Um, and then in the input field here, I'm going to go with the placeholder. So it's just a default text. Um, so it's a shadowy text. So you can see that you're supposed to input something here. Write something nice. If you want to see all of the different attributes, you can always go to the documentation for Ionic to see all of the different attributes that you can put into all of the tags. Uh, let's see what it looks like right now. So this is the UI now. You can write something nice here and then you can uh, press the button here. And uh, something that uh, you of course have noticed is that uh, if you have this filter set on, uh, that I have right now, the toxicity filter, uh, so that the users inside of your chat are not allowed to write something that is uh, very, very mean. Uh, you, of course, have a delay. And uh, what can we do about the delay? So, of course, we can speed up the uh, toxicity filter by downloading the TensorFlow model and then running it locally instead of on a different API. But I'm going to do something more simple that is just uh, modifying the UI to make the user interface feel responsive, although the TensorFlow model isn't actually responding faster. So remember, we have this list of messages inside of our DOM that we are constantly reading from. When this particular client sends a message, we're just going to take the message, put it into the DOM right away, and then once we get a response from the server, so when the server responds, we know whether or not the message was toxic, we can always remove it again because it is only existing on this one client, which means all of the other clients that are actively listening to this particular query to get messages from here will not get this malicious message, even if this client chooses to append the message to its own messages. So if you have any sort of messaging service, like if you open up Messenger on your phone and you write a message to someone, it'll appear in your feed immediately. But notice there is often a little check mark next to the message, whether or not someone else has received the message. And I'm not thinking about seeing the message, I'm thinking about whether or not someone has received the message. So once the other clients have received the message, it means it has successfully been persisted. So explaining the feature that I'm going to build uh, is very complicated. So what I've done is I've just completed the building of the feature and now I'm going to show you what it looks like so you can see I have two clients here and these clients are going to communicate by message. One is going to send here, but I don't want the delay of the toxicity filter for myself. So you see, once I click send here, I get a little exclamation mark that it hasn't been approved yet. The other clients, they get the message after it has been through the filter. So you see, this is a, another user. They can also send something here and they are now getting their uh, message uh, checked by the toxicity filter. So you get your own message immediately, uh, but other clients get the message after it has been through the filter. 
so this is a way of circumventing the delay of the toxicity filter, but still having a chat uh, that is only allowing things to be persisted once it has been through the filter. And now you will go back in time with me to see how to build this feature. First of all, I don't need the, this uh, model right now. The, the model is actually just a way of restricting us. Um, so I'm going to delete it. Of course, if you want models, you can always just create models for whatever you're doing. Right now, we are writing the timestamp to the document on the server side. I'm also going to do it uh, right away here because we're going to append it to our messages inside of the client right away. So I'm going to write timestamp, new date. Gonna make a comma here and a comma here. And then I'm going to write ID. And now we're going to auto generate an ID ourselves. So instead of saying to Firestore, make an ID for this document, we're just going to randomly generate something. And we can actually use the math.random for this. So if you write math.random plus one to string, then it can convert a random number to a string. And then you can get some characters out of it. Uh, so I'm not going to go into much detail as uh, how this uh, generation works, but just trust me, this, this will make a random string of characters for you here. And uh, you attach this DTO to the server and then it goes through the filter. But before that, I'm going to say this messages push and then we're going to put the message DTO into here. So we are appending our messages right away. And I'm going to add one additional property to this message because we need to know whether or not this message has been persisted into the centralized storage beforehand. So what I'm going to do now is make an object here, use the triple dot operator here. It takes the current object and then it can append another property to this object. And I'm going to write uh, approved and I'm going to set that to true. So uh, that just means uh, whether or not this message has been through the filter yet. So I think I'm just going to uh, change the name of this property here to make it a little more understandable. Um, has been through toxicity filter yet and i'm going to put it to false here so now it is very explicit what what this property means here so when we persist a new message first we get it to our own messages and then once it's being persisted it comes back to us from the server and now we can listen for it here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out whether or not it already exists inside of our messages. So the way we can figure out if a given document is already existing inside of our array of documents is this messages find index. And then we just look for some properties. So m here for message.id equals change doc id. So here I can just write a const id or const index. And uh, the index here, if it doesn't find any that matches, it will be minus one. So I can say if index equals minus one, then it means we don't have the message yet and we just push it into our list of messages. And uh, I can write an else statement here if I want to. And just write this messages and then take the index and then just say has been through toxicity filter yet equals to true. And since we're using the add method inside of the cloud function that is actually persisting the message, we need to change that to doc. Um, and then say body.id and write set so it doesn't auto generate anything. And we don't need to add the date here. Um, and in fact, I think what I'm going to do is instead of letting the middleware put the user object 
uh, I will just let it stay with the user ID um, and I don't need that logger anymore. And because we refactored our applications no longer include data as an object inside of the document, we don't need to look for that anymore. And uh, I think we might have several in here. Yeah, there's one here. I think that was it. So uh, let's uh, try and use our new feature now. So I'm going to add something here uh, right after the message content that is just going to indicate whether or not this has been through the toxicity filter. So if I just make something like a p tag and write an ng if m has been through toxicity filter yet, uh, I can make an exclamation mark. And I'm going to put this outside of the ion text just so you can see that this is separate. And uh, I think I actually need to flip this conditional. Uh, so I'm going to make this one false here. And then I'm going to make this one here true. And I should probably rename it then. Uh, has not been through toxicity filter yet. And let's go in here, make sure we're using the correct property. And we also need to change the variable name here. So yeah, renaming variables, that's a, a lot of hassle. And let's uh, reload the application. We have it here. And now the time has come for the test. Hello send message and it's going to have a little exclamation mark and then it's going to disappear once it's been approved i think we should just make the exclamation mark a little more um, readable so i'm going to make an ion batch here uh, and i'm just going to keep the exclamation mark And I think this uh, this looks more like it's uh, maybe a different color color uh, warning. And right here, it's uh, super easy to just do the chat bubble of the others in the chat right away. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is just flip this conditional here, make it float left, and uh, change the black background color to something like a light gray. Maybe if we just write gray, that's one called light gray, and uh, make the text black. And uh, it doesn't matter with the batch here, because there's no way we can read any message from another user that has not been through the toxicity filter yet. So let's just do a little test here. Uh, I have some... I have two tabs open here. One client is sending it's going to get approved here once it's approved it's going to show up at the other client here so one thing that i think would be really cool to also have is a little more feedback in the application here so we're not really using this but this is super helpful if we actually want to remove some stuff again so let's say we write a message here and the toxicity filter says it's not allowed but we ourselves appended this to our own list of messages in this current client well, then we can remove it again. And we can also let the user know that something is wrong. So inside of the Ionic library, they have a toast component, which I'm going to use. And uh, of course, a toast component is something you could also find in other libraries like Material. So I'm going to write a private toast controller. Toast controller. And you can see this toast controller comes from uh, ionic slash angular and down here uh, just after we are done with the post request and we get the response from the promise we can write this toast controller create and here we just make some properties for a new toast object so we can say message is um, your message has been received successfully received yeah and um, under the circumstance that it isn't received successfully we can say this toast controller creates 
message your message was rejected and uh, after uh, we have created the toast we need to show it and uh, that is also a promise in and of itself so we write then results results dot present and i think i need to just remove this one dot present as a method and again here we do the same thing then results results dot present and of course this present method uh, exists as a method on this HTML ion toast element and we know we're going to get this as a response to our promise because the create method here puts it inside of the promise so that's how we know and of course if the message is rejected what we also need to do is we need to remove it so uh, we can say this messages a uh, filter m m dot id equals id uh, message dto dot id so it, it needs to be the exact same filter as we use down here and i th think we need to flip the conditional here so just flip this one and of course uh, the filter here it's not a void it actually returns the same object so we're going to write this messages equals this messages dot filter and now let's test it so we're going to do something you shouldn't do write something that's not nice you're totally stupid send the message we see the exclamation mark and now we get a response here your message was rejected and let's try and write something that is nice nice so uh, you're totally cool that's uh, our nice message now it's getting tested and now we have received our message successfully i think we should just uh, change the rejected message to have a different color color and uh, we actually can see that there are some uh, suggestions here so color danger that is uh, our desired color for that outcome uh, color success you're totally cool uh, you're totally stupid it's getting rejected i think in order to keep this video a somewhat reasonable length i'm just going to cut it off right here uh, so this is just to demonstrate some of the UI stuff that you can do with Grid and uh, what kind of leveraging we can get with a UI library and a little bit about managing our data inside of our application and about uh, getting some feedback.